Okay, girls and boys, ladies and gentlemen, today's video, I'm just gonna sit down, have a little chat to you about something that I am very, very good at. Believe it or not, I'm good at sleeping. And that's actually something I'm proud of because sleep for me is probably one of the most important things when it comes to your health. Obviously, nutrition, exercise, all that stuff is very important, but sleep is what impacts your day the most. It's when your body recovers mentally and physically. So, as you guys know, I track all my sleep using the Whoop Band. Um, I'll have a link for the Whoop down below in the description. You can use my link and you'll get your first month free, which means you save like 30 quid. Uh, the band, you get the band for free and then you pay a monthly membership, but this will literally change your life, change my life. Makes me think about what I'm doing before I go to bed, what I'm doing during the day in order to get a good night's sleep and a good night's rest and to be able to recover and to be able to function at my best during the day. So what I did the other day on Instagram is I always post my whoop score when I get a green recovery, which is I will get a green recovery as long as I'm not going out and partying. I'm, my bedtime routine is very, very good. I always sleep like a baby, so I'm very lucky. I'm very fortunate, but I think I've nailed my routine down, so I'm gonna share with you guys how I do it. But what I did is I asked on Instagram if you have any questions about how to recover, how to get a good night's sleep. So before I answer the questions, I'm gonna quickly talk about the four stages of sleep. So there's obviously awake, light sleep, deep sleep, and REM sleep. Light sleep is the initial phase of sleep. That's when you're most likely to be woken up. Uh, things like your environment, people outside your window talking, shouting, stuff like that, loud music playing, especially here in Ibiza, that's what keeps you awake when you're in that initial stage of light sleep. Your body doesn't do any recovery whatsoever in that stage, that's just the transitional stage before you get to deep sleep. Deep sleep is when you physically recover, so if you've been working hard in the gym, if you've been running, if your body is physically tired, then during the stage of deep sleep, that is when your body is gonna physically recover. So it's very important if you're doing a lot of exercise, if you're smashing the gym, that you get into that stage of deep sleep. There's different things that affect how long it takes to get into deep sleep and REM sleep. I'll talk about that in a minute. So after deep sleep, you then go into REM sleep. REM sleep st stands for rapid eye movement. That's when your brain is recovering, your memory is recovering, anything that you've learned throughout the day, any memories that you've created throughout the day, that's when it's being stored in your head and that's the most important because that's gonna determine how you feel the next day. So it's very important that you get deep sleep and REM sleep each night and it'll vary between how much you get of each. But REM sleep is the very last one. So say you get a bad night's sleep, three or four hours, you might actually get no REM sleep, which means it's very detrimental to, to you mentally. Your brain doesn't recover from the days, from whatever has happened during that day. So the next day you're gonna be feeling pretty terrible. Another thing that's very important is you never ever wanna be woken up when you're in REM sleep because that's the deepest part of your sleep. That's when you're gonna have those crazy dreams. That's when, that's when your brain is recovering. So if you get woken up when you're in the middle of a REM sleep, you're gonna be feeling groggy, you're gonna be feeling tired, you're gonna be in a bad mood. So one thing that the Whoop does is it's tracking your sleep the whole time based on your heart rate variability, your heart rate, your respiration rate, everything. And it knows when you're going into these diff different stages of sleep. So what you can do is you can set an alarm on the Whoop it will gently vibrate to wake you up at the best time possible so it's not gonna wake you up when you're in that stage of REM sleep, which is very good because it means that you're gonna wake up at the optimal time. So that's one thing that I really like about the Whoop. That's a new feature that they added this year and for me, that's a game changer. Right, let's analyze, let's analyze one of my sleeps, right? Yesterday, I got a 95% recovery. I got seven hours, 47 minutes of sleep. So let's analyze how much of each of the stages of sleep that I had. So as you can see on my app, I was awake for two hours. That's me kind of like falling asleep, waking up, falling asleep, waking up. And then I was in a light sleep for three hours and 32 minutes. And then I was in a deep sleep for one hour and 54, which is really, really good. And then I had two hours, 21 of REM sleep. So for me, that is a really, really good sleep. And as you can see, I got 95% recovery. Um, respiration rate is 13.8, which is very low, very, very good. It means my breathing's good when I'm asleep. Um, it's a lot cooler now in Ibiza, so I don't need the aircon on, and I can sleep with the windows open, and that really helps with respiration rate as well. So, you can see the different stages, and you can see the efficiency of the sleep. You can see how much of the sleep was restorative, four hours and 15 minutes, very, very good. So, that's one thing that I like about the Whoop is all these stats, and it makes you actually think about what you need to do before bed and what to do throughout the day to make sure that you're gonna get a good sleep. Common misconceptions, okay, with sleep. People think that smoking a joint before they go to bed gets them a nice sleep. People think that having a nightcap, a drink, a whiskey or something like that before they go to bed gets them a good sleep. Actually, what those things are is they are sedat sedatives, sedatives, 
Sedatives or sedatives? Around here? Sedatives. Sedatives. So, you know when you put a horse to sleep by giving it a tranquilizer, the, the horse actually isn't asleep. These things, weed, alcohol, all of that stuff, sleeping tablets, they're sedatives. They're actually like tranquilizers. They're not gonna put you into a real sleep. They're gonna put you into a false sleep, a fake sleep. So you're actually getting no REM sleep, no deep sleep, no recovery whatsoever. So be very, very careful when you're doing stuff like this. So, for example, if I have a couple of beers throughout the day, that's not gonna impact my sleep. If I have three or four beers right before I go to bed, that's gonna affect my sleep. And what it does is it delays the process of deep sleep and REM sleep. So it means that there's le less chance and less time for me to get those maximal hours of REM and deep sleep. The same as if I don't smoke weed, but if you smoked a joint before bed, it's just gonna delay the whole process. So I highly recommend not doing any of that stuff before you go to bed. And now what I'll do is I'll tell you my routine before I go to bed. So most important, stay hydrated throughout the day. I drink probably three or four of these. I'll drink a full one in the gym easily, and then I drink three other three other bottles of this throughout the day. I drink a lot of water, I always stay hydrated. Again, we're in a beef I'm sweating a lot, especially with this broken leg, broken foot, and the crutches. So hydration is absolute key. Number two, second most important thing, make sure your room is cold. If you go to sleep and you're too hot, you literally can't get any sleep at all. It's much better to be too cold in bed and be wrapped up in the blankie rather than being too hot. If you're too hot, you won't sleep, you won't get any REM sleep, you won't get any deep sleep. So if you need to use aircon, use it. Have it on a low set and you don't wanna wake up feeling all groggy and blocked up. That can also affect the respiration rate. So again, just be very careful, find the fine balance. And again, if you can sleep with the windows open, get fresh air, get the room ventilated, that's also very good. Number three, make sure your room's nice and dark. Close the curtains, have blackout blinds, whatever you need to keep the room nice and dark. Number four, don't eat too close to bed. I reckon have your last meal two hours before you go to sleep. You don't want your digestive system and your body working whilst you're asleep. That's gonna affect everything as well. Number five, you can in the winter you can have a hot bath, in the summer you can have a cold shower. You wanna bring your body to, its, to a temperature that it likes, that it feels relaxed to go to sleep. I um, don't know what number one, who cares what number one. Zinc and magnesium, normally I use the my supplements, my vitamins from Solgar, um, they're the best, but these are from Holland and Barrett and my, all my Solgar ones are finished. So zinc and magnesium before you go to bed. One thing I'm not too sure on, but I try not to do is I used to eat a bowl of cereal before bed or have a glass of milk, but I don't know how milk reacts with zinc and magnesium. So I recommend just drinking water, avoid milk before bed. And these are literally a game changer. You could also try CBD. CBD does work well for me, but zinc and magnesium actually work even better. Another thing you can do, you can play sleep music. Cindy can't go to sleep without sleep music, so just go on YouTube, play the sleep music, lock your phone. It's very relaxing and it helps a lot. Another thing that I sometimes do if I'm not with Cindy is I'll listen to a podcast. Normally, a more of an informal podcast, like a funny episode of Joe Rogan or something, because what you don't want is when you're lying in bed to be overthinking about everything that's happened in the day or what's happening tomorrow or stressing or worrying. So what I do is I listen to a podcast where it's not gonna stimulate my mind too much, but it's gonna take my mind off everything that's happened during the day. So I'm not thinking about stuff or worrying before I go to bed. That really, really helps me. And eventually when I'm half asleep, I'll just turn it off. Don't drink too much water before you go to bed because you don't wanna be getting up all night to go to the toilet, obviously. And yeah, try and go to bed. I don't do this, but I'm very lucky. Try and go to bed at the same time and wake up at the same time each and every day. Always aim for eight hours. I literally need minimum eight hours if I have any less. I don't function well at all. And for most of you, I would probably cut off caffeine around five or 6 p.m. For me, I can literally drink pre-workout at 9 p.m., go to the gym and still fall asleep at 12. For me, sleep is no problem. I'm very, very lucky, I'm very fortunate. And I'm kind of happy over the last two years that I've worked out what works well for me to sleep and what makes me feel the best throughout the day. Also people, a lot of you will be asking, should I take melatonin? If you listen to Matthew Walker, Joe Rogan, melatonin actually isn't that good. There isn't, it's not actually been proven to work. And now I'll quickly answer some of your questions. Oh, there's another one as well, which I forgot, but maybe I should mention it, maybe not. If you, well, I'm just gonna say it. If, if you're a male and you basically bust a nut before you go to sleep, <laughs> it's gonna help you sleep. It releases uh, these chemicals in the brain that helps you fall asleep. So whether you're with your wife or girlfriend or whether you're just by yourself and you've got your hand, doing that before you go to sleep will honestly 
be a game changer. It releases all the chemicals and it helps you fall asleep. That is proven. Sammy's just came in. Joel, come and say hello. Everyone's been wondering where you are. Here. Stick your head in there. Hey. Joel's hello. still alive, people. Still here. Right, I'll quickly answer some of these questions, as many as I can, as fast as I can. Sleep with socks on or socks off? Mm, I'd probably sleep with socks off. Well, it depends if your feet get cold. But I think sleep with socks off, to be honest. Any supplements before bed? Zinc and magnesium keeps me awake. That's very interesting. Maybe try, try just using zinc or try just using magnesium before bed. Not together, see what happens. Um, or try CBD. What happens if you wake up in the middle of the night? If you wake up in the middle of the night, it depends. It depends how many hours sleep you've had. Sometimes if you're lying in bed restless for an hour or two and you can't get back to sleep, it's actually best to get up, go watch TV, go read a book, do something that's gonna, there's no point lying in bed trying to get back to sleep. If you're gonna be there for an hour or two, you're gonna get frustrated, you're gonna get stressed, and you're not actually gonna be able to get back to sleep. So go and do something different. Get up out of your bed, read a book or something like that. What foods help you sleep? I don't think any foods actually help you sleep but it's just important not to eat too close to bed. How accurate is the Whoop with sleep quality? Whoop is the most accurate, accurate wearable on the market right now for sleep. So it's the best in the game. Make sure you use my link down in the description. How many times on average do you wake up in the night? Honestly, almost never. Probably to go to the toilet once every now and then if I've drank too much water before bed, but I literally never wake up. If I'm in a really, really deep sleep, the only time I wake up is when my alarm goes off in the morning. How to sleep faster, overcome insomnia. Insomnia is something that I've never dealt with, but I do know people that do have insomnia and people like Ranbir who literally can't sleep at all. Um, I recommend going to a doctor. Don't use sleeping tablets, that's not gonna help. It'll help you get to sleep, but it's gonna affect your REM sleep and deep sleep. So I think you need to kind of find out what the cause of the problem, why you have insomnia and kind of treat it. Maybe it's something mentally, maybe it's stress. Who knows what it is, but I think taking sleeping tablets isn't gonna help you. Does stress affect our sleep? Yes, of course it does. So, for example, another thing you can do before you go to bed, if, you've, if you're thinking about too much in your head, get a pen and paper, put it next to your bed, write everything down that's on your mind, clear your, clear your brain, and then you're gonna get a better night's sleep. And again, keep it there in the middle of the night if, in case you wake up with any ideas or anything that's in your head, and you can quickly write it down and just clear your head, and then you can come back to that in the morning. Are you taking creatine? It's nothing to do with sleep, but no, I'm not taking creatine. <laughs> Any mattress brand suggestions? There's loads of different mattresses on the market that can help you sleep. They've got like cooling technology to keep you, the most important thing is to regulate your body temperature in bed. You don't wanna to be too hot at all. So definitely research that. Self cooling mattresses. Someone says morning sex question mark. That has nothing to do with sleep, but yes. Does sleeping next to Cindy affect your sleep? If you're sleeping with a partner, wife, girlfriend, or anything, one thing that's gonna, it's gonna impact is you're gonna be a lot hotter in bed because two human bodies are hotter than one. So again, like I said, make sure you're nice and cool, but having cuddles in bed is the best. I love cuddles more than anything, so that it, it actually helps me sleep. I've done a lot of research. I've worn a whoop for two years. I know what impacts my sleep. I know what gets me a better sleep. I know what destroys my sleep. And yeah, the whoop app is very, very good. The Whoop Band is very, very good. If you have any more questions, ask them down below in the comments. Like I said, get a Whoop Band. Sleep is the most important factor of health, in my opinion. And yeah, I hope this video helps you get a better sleep. Make sure you focus on your sleep. Obviously, exercise, diet is very important, but sleep is number one. So, thanks for watching. Link down below in the bio for the Whoop. And if you have any questions at all, ask them down below, and I'll try and help you get a better night's sleep. Thanks for watching.